want to share some thoughts and kind of turned a little bit from what you have in the back of your bulletin, but it's close enough so you can track with it. And at the end of this message, Lord willing, we're going to be breaking bread together. In this passage of scripture that we find, especially in Luke 19, we find this man by the name of Zacchaeus. How many remember Zacchaeus, the little guy? Say amen. If you don't, um, we'll remind you of it. If you do, uh, I was brought to this scripture. Uh, Sometimes things just come to me very quickly. Sometimes things take me hours and hours and hours. Sometimes I'll go two hours before, I'll, and I'll read scriptures before I find the right ones for the right day and, and uh, bring that apart, uh, uh, to bring that to us when we gather together. Other times, it's labor, it's work, it's time, it's waiting, it's asking, it's looking for confirmation. And so, however, that's part of my world, but... It does make a difference when we come to the table. I'm going to look at this word. I'm going to look at A-B-L-E, able. God is able. And in our passage of Scripture we read this morning, the Bible says that we are able ministers of the new covenant. Would you say that with me? We are able ministers of the new covenant. That is different than the old covenant, which was read to us this morning. You can always remember it by Jeremiah 31, 31. God says, I'm going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel, and it will not be like the old covenant where you say, brethren, sit down and chant the scriptures through and kind of externally to external to internal, and hopefully you have enough God, enough Bible to get you where you need to go. God says, I'm going to change all of that. I'm going to come. My spirit is going to convict you. My blood is going to wash your sins away. Your name is going to be written in the book of life. I'm going to equip you. You are going to be the people of God that are going to be in the world to make a difference. You're not going to be just a people group that I take care of, of my own, and I fight for you, and I watch over you, and I give you manna when you're hungry, but I'm going to be a God that is going to make you what you ought to be in the image of God, making a difference in this world. Can somebody say amen? And so with that thought in mind, we find that a new covenant is coming, was spoken, and it is here now. And then we have a new covenant example that is shown in the life of this man by the name of Zacchaeus. And then we have Paul's comment of the new covenant power and how that makes a difference. And so first of all, in looking at this passage of Scripture specifically as it's looking toward Zacchaeus, we find that he was a wee little man. A wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree to see what he could see. And the Lord came and said, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house for tea. Remember that? When I was a little kid, we couldn't go to kindergarten or we couldn't go to uh, Sunday school until we were five years old and I remember it very very vividly it's like oh we couldn't wait we just couldn't wait till we were old enough to go to Sunday school we talk about it hell it's only another year and we got in there and that was the first song they taught and I still remember that today but this man was a wee little man he was a small man and so um What's your problem? What's your issue? See, if that was today, they would take Zacchaeus and they would start a social program for smaller people and they would teach him and have him have sessions so that they can live acceptably and learn how to live a life. And then they would pass laws that everybody would be nice to shorter people and that uh, you can't offend anybody. And so then we would have Republicans and Democrats that would fight over who and see whether we should protect him or not protect him or make that, that short people have been disenfranchised for so long and now short people can go beat up other people and kick people in the shins or maybe ankles. <laughs> Somebody say amen. So the Bible says that this guy had some statements and 
the Bible said that he had some faith. He said he wanted to know Jesus. He sought after Jesus. He looked for Jesus. He thought of ways to get near to Jesus. He climbed up on people's shoulders and they said, get out of here, squirt. Get out of here. Get out, out, out. But he was also a, small, a smart man who said, I'm going to use my seeming disability for the glory of God. And he said, I'm going to go find a sycamore tree. Now, some scholars in some of the old translations says sycamine trees. And the sycamine trees meant it was their own tree. Now, I can't prove this, but it could be that when he saw Jesus and he saw where he was going, he thought, wow, this guy's coming toward my house. I'm going to get up in my tree where nobody can tell me what to do, and I'm going to wait for the Lord there. I don't know. That may or may not be true. But whatever we do know, that he did want to see Jesus, and he did take everything that he had to get close to Jesus. And I want to encourage you this morning, whatever it is that separates us from the love of God or the person of Jesus or the anointing of the Lord and to get to know who Jesus is, use that for the glory of God. Use that to get closer to the Lord. Don't let your seeming, whatever they call you, stop you and label you from entering into the kingdom of God. Use what you have to the glory of the Lord. At some point, you have to come and say, look, God, you made me me. I am me. I'm not going to be anybody else or anything other than me, and I need to accept me as I am. How many have had that identity crisis sometime in your life? Say amen. I've seen people that are 20, 30 years older than me. They still haven't got that figured out. They still have an impurity uh, complex. They still are struggling over what they didn't have. I have people come and say, oh, I should have did this, I should have did that, I should have did this 20 years ago. And one time I said to one of the guys, I said, yeah, you probably should have. You can't say that, you're my pastor. I said, well, you're saying it every time I see you. Maybe you should have did something different. <laughs> Maybe you wouldn't be. <laughs> so you got to come to the place where you accept who you are in God. And not let labels... Shortness, tallness, bigness, skinniness, on and on. Label us. We need to just simply be who we are in the Lord. This guy had, I think every single person on this earth has something inside of them that they really want to know God, they want to know Jesus, they want to get to know this Lord, but they, they stopped and they, they're hindered. When I was on federal grand jury, one of the guys who was sitting next to me, his name was Paul, and uh, he said, hey, pastor, he said, do you know anybody, and it took me a long time to figure out, he did it between cases so I couldn't answer him, <laughs> but he says, do you know anybody like me that's an atheist that has a good story at the end of their life? And I said, yeah, well, I know tons of people. I said, we got a lot of people in our church that struggled through that, and they came to know it. I started telling them stories, and so next time I met him, I was all ready to talk to him. I got some books and things, and I started talking to him about God. And, man, he just backed off. He said, I don't want to do this, and just freaked out. I said, man, I'm just answering the question that you asked me. How many know there's a time and a season when people are open, and if you miss that moment, it is gone forever, and you might as well know it. And so we've got to catch those moments. But Zacchaeus is up the tree, and Jesus comes, and he says to Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus. And in the back of his mind, he hears Robin saying, he knows my name. He knows my name. <laughs> didn't he say that? Yeah, Jesus didn't meet him before. Somebody didn't say, hey, this is that tax collector, you know, that guy, that mean guy who's stealing from people all the time, the one who's got an inferiority complex. He's all, he, now he has a little Caesar syndrome, and now he's stealing money from everybody. You know that little guy? No, that never happened. Never happened. What did happen is the Lord gave Jesus, God, Father, gave Jesus a word of knowledge. 
You can have a word of knowledge. That's one of the gifts of the Spirit. I was praying for a man one time, and uh, I said, who's Renee? Just came to my mind, popped into my head. Renee. And the guy started crying. We, we prayed together. It was his daughter. I said, you need to, I don't know, God's just saying Renee to me. I don't know who she is. God said to Jesus, I'm a foibled person. I have a hard time making it through. But when the Holy Spirit, somebody say Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit makes a difference. The Holy Spirit empowers. The Holy Spirit quickens. The Holy Spirit gives gifts to people. And God gave a, a gift to Jesus that day and said, you're going to meet a man and his name is Zacchaeus. So Jesus looks up and says, Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, come down. I need to, here it is, abide in your house. The word abide in the original means I'm coming into your house and I'm going to stay there. And I want you to know that when Jesus Christ takes up residence inside of us, he doesn't come just in the good times. Because the God of the good times is the God in the bad times. The God of the mountain is the God of the valley. And when God comes into us, he knows our issues. He knows our situations. He knows who we are. And that's where people sometimes, when we fight for and pray for our nation, God knew we would blow it. God knew we would do foolish things. God knew we would sell out the store. But he loves and he wants to restore us anyway. When he comes into our lives personally, he knows we have anger issues. He knows we have unbelief issues. He knows we struggle to let our faith be public, but he comes in to stay. He doesn't come in to move away. He'll never leave us, never forsake us. Never, never leave you, the Greek says. Never, never, never forsake you. But they said it makes a sentence anyway, but it left it out because in most of your Bibles, when you read, that's Hebrews 13, 6. I'll never leave you. He wants to come in to stay. He said to Zacchaeus, I'm coming. I'm coming into your house, and I'm going to stay with you. We're going to have a conversation. Now, he didn't mean he was going to stay there forever, but to us it means when he comes in, the word is very emphatic. He's not just going to do a little uh, cup of tea and I'm out of here. No, I'm going to talk to you. We're going to mend up some things. You're going to be saved. 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 <laughs> Amen. Are you saved? Are you walking like it? Are you talking like it? Jesus said, I'm going to come in. I'm going to abide with you. And Christ comes in. He comes in to stay. The Bible says there in that other passage that we read in 2 Corinthians 3, it says we are changed in the same image from glory to glory. That means God is always working in us, always changing it. Remember in the Old Testament, you had to sit down and chant. By four years old, you had to learn major portions of the Old Testament. By 20 years old, you needed to know just about everything verbatim, but it was all memory. It was all rote. You did have the Bible inside you. You did have the law of God, but it was in your mind. It was in your brain, and you somehow had to take life, figure it out from that. God says, that's good to have the word, but there's a better way. How many believe the new covenant that Jesus gives in his blood is better than the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer and the sprinkling to the unclean? We have a Jesus who washes our sins away and who is showing us his glory and is changing us from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So you might gossip, but when you gossip and you go home at night, you're going to say, blast it all, my tongue got away from me again, and Lord, help me with that. Or we cuss. It's like, God, I just can't control this tongue. Will you help me? Or we get depressed or whatever our issue is. Holy Spirit will not stop you from sinning, but the Holy Spirit will stop you from enjoying your sin. You will not, 
What I pray for myself, I often pray for other people. Lord, help me to love the things that you love and hate the things that you hate. Lord, make me repulsive. Help me to hate, be disgusting, spit that I, things that are not that you hate. Help me to hate them. Things that you love, Lord, that's where my passion. It may not be where I, my life is all the time. It's where my heart is. I want to love what God loves and hate what God hates. Can somebody say amen? So God is able. God is able to help us. God is able to minister to us, and he wants to abide with us. The Bible says, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you will ask what you will. The Bible says that if you abide in me, you will not be fruitless, but you will bear much fruit for the Lord. Abiding in Him. Jesus is guy. look, I'm with you, I'm in you, I'm for you, I'm standing, I'm not going to leave you. And He's asking us to reciprocate that and say, I'm in you, I'm following you. He is in us, we are in Him. Is the tea in the cup, or is the cup in the tea? Is the water in the tea, or is the cup in the water? What is it? it, it we're amalgamated, we are brought together by the power of God. We're inseparable, and we need to walk and think and live that way. Amen. Secondly, we see that Bible truth was practiced here. So not only did Zacchaeus come to the Lord, not only did he find faith, not only did he, in fact, he did say this. The Bible says, um, there's two things. Let me, let me just go back for a moment. He says, first of all, he says, he scurried down the tree. Now, last Sunday I said, I've been praying for um, people that if they get offended, they won't walk out, they'll run out the door. And I pray if people are coming to the Lord and they're looking for God, they won't walk to the altar, they'll run to the altar. Well, somebody said they got offended on that, so we're going to talk about offended people here in a minute, so hold your, hold your breath on that. But, um, so here's Jesus, and the Bible says when he says, I'm coming to your house, he didn't go, I had a hard time staying awake. Oh, kind of a nice tree here. No, he jumped up. He slid down that tree. He went into it. In fact, the Greek word is speedo. He sped. He violated natural laws. And he ran and he went. And the Bible says he received Jesus into his house. And that word means that he opened the door and brought him into the covering of his house. I was at somebody's house yesterday and talking to him, and they said, come on in. I'm sorry I was talking to you. I forgot. Come on in along those lines. And when God makes himself known to us, we need to receive him. We need to come in, Lord. You know, I'm just, and what do we often do? We apologize, they apologize. Yeah, I'm sorry, you know, we're doing this. We're, we're fixing up this. We're doing this. And, you know, hey, don't apologize. It's where you are. It's where life is. It's where you're at at this point. But it doesn't change the fact that God wants to come in, receive him. Say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come in. I receive you. I re Everybody say this with me. Holy Spirit, come into me with fresh power. And fresh anointing, I receive you today. Amen. Receive you. I take you into my house. I want you to be under my shelter. I want you to live with me. I want, I want you to be a part of this. And then, Bible truths are manifest. So we know that Zacchaeus is a Jewish boy, young man, whatever he is. And so he knows the Bible. But he's not following the Bible. Okay, here's what he was. There's only one thing worse than a Republican, and that's a publican, right? <laughs> Democrats, we'll get to them later. But anyway, so it, it says he was a publican. You know what a publican is? A publican is a person who's a Jewish person. They're under the domination of Rome, and they hire themselves out to Rome to get tax money from people. And so what they do is they, they, they intimidate. Now, here's a little guy. And he, does he, intimidation work for him? No. So he's got two big Roman soldiers behind him and says, put more in the coffer. That's not enough money. No, more, more. And he would steal the money. He would put some in this pocket. Do you believe that? You'll find out in a minute. Sure, that's exactly what he did. 
And that's what some people do. That's what I used to do. I used to talk big and have two six foot six guys. <laughs> I mean, one time we were in Mexico and, and these two guys were with me and, and I was going all over. I was talking to people. I was buying stuff. I was talking big. And these two guys, both of them over six foot, it took them a while to figure me out. They said, we think, are you? I said, don't ask that question. <laughs> I said, yeah. That's what he did. He intimidated, he stole, he lied, he cheated, he twisted the law, he perverted justice, and he was a son of Abraham, and he knew better, and he did it anyway because he's on payback for all the stuff that people said to him was a, when he was a little kid, and he held on to that complex, and he held on to that complex, and he lived in that complex, but he hated it. He did not like it. He wanted to be free, and so he saw Jesus, and he's thinking, maybe, maybe, maybe I can find some hope in this man. And Jesus talked to him, and who knows what the whole conversation is, but we do know that Bible truths, and he said to the Lord, he said, number one, I'm going to give half of my goods to the poor. Have you ever done that? Have you ever just taken some of your stuff and given it away? Just every once in a while, Eve and I wear the same clothes, and, and, and don't think I'm some holy saint, because let me tell you, the first time I saw Eve, I went through my closet, I found stuff I didn't like, had a broken loop here or something, and so I gave it to Eve. So I'm over in Haiti, he's got my pants on with the broken and he's with a bunch of pastors, and the broken loop is there. And here's Christian pastor Timothy Warner from Hayward, Wisconsin, that honored the man of God with my junk. And I said, God, forgive me. And so if I see Eve now, I give him the best that I have. I give him my best suits, my best ties, and I go to put on that tie, and I go, oh, shoot, I forget. No, no, thank you, Lord, I gave it. I, you're not supposed to give till it hurts. You're supposed to give until it feels good. And when you give till it feels good, that's when you're free. That's when you're saved. That's when you're practicing Bible. He's like, one half of the stuff that I have. Every one of us in here could do we could all live on half of our stuff. I know a pastor before he was a pastor, and he actually I learned this from him, and his business wasn't selling. He just, things were going bad. He would go up into his closet. He would start taking his stuff. He would bring it to Goodwill. He'd bring it to Salvation Army, wherever, and he would unload it. And he said his phone would ring. Business would start to go. There's something when you give it away. There's something about when you practice Bible and you stop hoarding on to everything and holding on to every little thing you can and you turn it around and say, God, this is yours. This is your money. This is your person. This belongs to you. I'm delighted to do anything you want me to do. And the first thing he said is I'm going to give half of my goods away. And then he said, if I've taken anything from anybody by extortion, he said, I'm going to pay them back fourfold, four times of what I stole from them. How many think salvation has come into that house? Apparently Jesus did. He says, Jesus said, salvation has come into this house. This guy's got it. I want you to know something. If you're truly saved, you will go back and make things right. If you stole something, you'll pay it back. If you offended somebody, you will pay it. You will go and apologize to that person. So I took about, it took me about 10 years of my life. I kept UPS in business from all the stuff I stole from so many people. I kept Ma Bell, all the phone calls. I kept U.S. Postal Service. Anyway, I had, to, I, I had to repent. I had to ask for forgiveness. I had to just humble myself, pay back people, stuff I stole from my job, gave it back to them called up. The owner of the company called me up. And he said, I don't know what happened to you, Warner. But he says, understand this. If you ever need a job, you call this number, you will have a job as long as I am the owner and as long as you're alive. And let me tell you, there's a couple of times I don't know about this pastor and stuff. But no, I won't. 
look down the barrel of a nine millimeter. So Zacchaeus started practicing the Bible. I'm convinced it's not that people don't know what to do. It's they don't know either how to do it or they don't have the strength to do it. But now when Jesus comes in, we know what to do. We know how to live. Amen? We don't need collision courses. We don't need government programs. We, don't, we just need the people of God to help us, to love us in our good times, to care for us and pray for us in our bad times. Really frustrated with somebody? Pray for them. Pray for them. Ask God to help them. What do we do? Do you know how many... The average person gossips 52 minutes every day. Every single day. Gossips. Trash talks. Well... You know, I don't know for sure, but you know what I think? I don't care what you think. I don't care. But tell me anyway. Who really do you think, think it could be? Think it could be? We love it. But somehow when Christ comes in, he changes us. He changes our desires. I'm not saying we, we have it all. The scripture is very clear. We change from glory to glory. Hopefully you're better off now than you were a year ago. Hopefully you're not cussing as much. Hopefully you're not drinking as much. Hoping you're not gossiping as much. Hoping you're not hating ethnics as much. Somebody say amen. And God will transform you, transform your thinking, your love, your passion, your heart, your habits. He'll transform you and that Bible will become such a living Bible that it's not even what you say. It's who you are and it will make a difference. Your kids are not going to remember that you bought a $10,000 stainless steel refrigerator and never talked to them, never spent time with them, never got into They don't care about stuff. But they'll remember if you loved them. They'll remember if you gave them a compliment. They'll remember them if when they did everything so foolish and so. So I was a new guy, worked for an electrician. And I was the youngest, I was a new guy. And so they're all paying their bills. I go up there. I reach in my pocket, and I got a bunch of change. I hit my hand. I changed money. Dollar bills are flying all over. All the guys are there. And they said to my boss, they said, is that one of your guys? And he says, that's one of my boys. See, I remember that. He could have made a fool of me, but he didn't do that. I remember the good thing that he said. I remember some folks that did some things that weren't so nice too, but I try to get, them, get rid of them. They'll remember the good things that you do. Somebody say amen. amen. Bible comes alive and it's practice. The, the next one is there's liberty. And I, I, I don't want to leave this quite. You know when you're really free? You're really free when you can give it away and you don't have to hold on to it. Just think of this man who is a hoarder, liar, cheater continually. He probably had his IRA, his... 401s, he had his retirement, he had it all, he had a bank, he had another bank, he had things, he was set up good, and that everybody would say to him, you know that Zacchaeus, you know, he's, he's probably really set up for life, oh, how would you like to have his money, all of that stuff. Zacchaeus is like, don't need it anymore, can't intimidate me anymore, when you're free to give it away, you are free, you found liberty, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is freedom, and the Spirit of the Lord came to Zacchaeus that day, and he was transformed. The oldness of the letter was gone. The newness of the Spirit had come. The realization of a new covenant that was made in the person of the Lord Jesus. Forgiveness of sins. Iniquities would not be remembered anymore. He was free to be who God made him to be. He was free to give things away. He was free to make things right and make restitution. He was a free free man not because the Democrats passed the law and said little men can go into 
bathrooms? Do you realize how petty and how little and how freakish those laws are? Yeah, contact your people, but I'll tell you what. Say, in the name of Jesus, I stand against that. Every time you see it on TV, every time it comes in again, take somebody's hand say, let's just pray and let's agree right now. God's going to stop that in its tracks. Somebody say amen. It's the people of God. It's not the ones who have warm thoughts. It's not the ones that say keep a good thought. It's not the ones that are hopeful for this uh, American economy to come back. It's the people of God full of the Holy Spirit who can stop the devils in his tracks, who can do more politically by the power of the Spirit of God than any politician or any lawmaker because we're the people of God. We stand against it. We defy it. We pray against it. We bind it. We loose it. We pray against it. Somebody say amen. Somebody said, well, what if I'm not binding right? God can figure that out. The Bible says when he takes all of the prayers, he takes them, he's got to add a whole bunch of stuff to it, then he brings it. If you ever read that in, I think it's the ninth chapter of Revelation, you should see what God does to our prayers. I don't think we pray right all the time. I don't think we ask, but I'll tell you what, we do pray, and we're going to put something in that prayer coffer that's going to make a difference in this world. Somebody say amen. amen. Liberty. And then... There were some interesting people that were also present there. And the Bible says that they murmured when they saw that Jesus was with a sinner. You remember that? They murmured. Oh, he can't be the son of God. This guy's, he's being nice to people. We know he's a sinner. You know, we're not real smart, but we know Zacchaeus. We know <laughs> he's a creepy sinner. He's a ishy sinner. He's a stealing sinner. How many have a few more adjectives you could call them? And, and Jesus went into his house. And by the way, when you went into the house and when you ate a meal with somebody, in the Jewish mind, you were making a covenant with them. And you don't make covenants with people that you eat with. And so he violated every single rule there was. How many think Jesus knew what the rules were and knew what they thought and knew what their little hard hearts would do and knew what they would say? But he's the son of God and he, uh, he practiced the principles and he showed, he waved his sign, this is who God is. See, they didn't know who God was, but Jesus said, I'm going to come and I'm going to show you who God is. I'm going to show you that he loves sinners. I'm going to show you that he cares for people. I'm going to show you that he transforms lives. I'm going to show you that he, hallelujah. So there's some things that God explains. I want to talk about some things that were brought to explanation here. The first thing is that there was a need inside of Zacchaeus. And folks, don't get so caught up in what they are on the exterior that you lose what the inside of that person is. God saw something in me that I didn't see in me. God saw something in you that you didn't see in you. God sees not just what you are or what you've been. He sees what he can make you and who you can be the moment you trust into the Savior. And we need to stop labeling ourselves and labeling people and buying into people who pass laws about more labels on people. He also saw Zacchaeus' faith. Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God and that faith comes alive and it wasn't because he saw Jesus because he was too short to hear to see Jesus but he wasn't too short to hear Jesus he's coming he's coming where faith comes by hearing the Bible said he got up he looked for he tried to press through he tried to get to the crowd he tried to get up on the shoulders of people he tried to get in he just was too small it wasn't going to happen so he asked for inspiration he used his thoughts he used his minds he used his creativity and sometimes we sell ourselves so short of pressing into God I'm too this I'm too carnal I'm too lazy my last name is good enough. We come up with stuff. But Zacchaeus says, away with that. In with Jesus. Out with my 
foibles, out with my inferiority complex, out with all of this small thinking that I had. I want to know who Jesus is. The Bible said Jesus saw his faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. And we see nothing but Jesus being pleased with this man and his faith. It explains unbelief. Who had unbelief? All right. Razzle dazzle us, Jesus. Let's see what you can do with this guy. We know what he's got going on. Oh, do you really? Do you, oh, all knowing, wonderful Pharisees with all knowledge and all wisdom, with infinite understanding of all people? No, you don't know. No, I don't know. Well, I think they thought too. Murmured. Complain. Isn't that a pleasant atmosphere? How many just love to be around people that just complain, 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 complain? It's just, can we do this again? You avoid them. But if you say, praise the Lord, hallelujah, gas prices are going up. I'm pumping gas, and some guy comes up to me, and he says, Bob, do you want to know who I voted for? I said, not really. <laughs> he said, well, I voted for the other guy. I'm having such a bad life. I'm God, if he would do that to me, I'd, I'm going to vote against him. <laughs> so that's what happened. No, we should say, thank God I can get gas. Thank you, Lord. Be thankful in your heart. How many know the number one, the biggest sin, the sin of all sins, the sins on the top of the list? Go to Romans 1, the last few verses, and look at the first one. It's unthankfulness, ungratefulness. You might be annoyed with people, but love people. Pray for them. Bless them. Casey did, talking about see somebody struggle, pay their dinner bill. My wife and I, we were at a restaurant recently, and we're going in. This pokey, slow lady <laughs> was driving. It's like, why does she have to? Anyway, they get out of the car. He's amputated on one leg. She's got some kind of disease. They tell us all of the problems. And it's like, okay, now we understand. We bought their dinner. Not because we're such compassionate people, because we misjudged and prejudged. It's like, you know what? And they're waving on their way out. Thank you. God bless them. Bless people. Give them a break. Maybe, just maybe, God sees them. What? God explains stuff to us. He doesn't put us down. He doesn't hurt us. He loves us. And then here's the message for the day, right here. This is it. Jesus says, this day has salvation come to this house, to this man. And we're always like, um, I wonder, I wonder what, the, oh, this revival that's coming, it's really good. Or it's, or, oh, boy, they're really doing good over there at that church. Oh, man, you ought to hear the, the wonderful things that are going. No, no, no. It's what's happening right here, right now in this house to you. That is faith, ladies and gentlemen. And Jesus is like, and there's people all the time, you know, we start saying, you know, praise the Lord, you know, God's just encouraging us and, and he's doing good. Oh, you ought, to, you ought to watch, you should hear what Pat Robertson said this week and the 700 Club and they're just, they're building airplanes and they're going, you know what, I'm not going to build airplanes, I'm not going to start a 700 Club, I'm going to take what God has given me and just, can you just please rejoice for one second in what God is doing with us? Can somebody say amen? Yeah, we don't have any airplanes. We're not shooting, uh, you know, we're not sending uh, super liners to Mars, to whatever. It's what happens right now, right here, that's vital to your life. And Jesus says, you know what's happening, guys? Right here, when you're murmuring, you're complaining, you're so stuck on this guy's life, 
and you should be happy. He's coming to the Lord. He's paying your bills back. He's not going to be annoying anymore. He's writing a book. It's called How Not to Annoy Fellow Jews Anymore from a Short Person's Perspective. <laughs> and it was a bestseller. And the archaeologists dug it up, and you know what they said? It rotted, and we can't read it. God explains things nicely, carefully. Now is the time. This is what's happening, guys, right here, right now. Is God doing something in your heart? Right here, right now. Amen. And then Jesus says this. He said, this man also is a child of Abraham. He's a true son of Abraham. What's all that about? God said, remember Abraham, the guy who, when I wanted to explain New Testament faith, I took Paul and I had him write about Abraham so they could understand because Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. I see that same faith in, in, in Zacchaeus. Do you know what God sees when we come to the Lord in faith? He sees the same faith that Abraham had. It's the true faith. It's the right faith. It's that faith that says, through you, Abraham, all of your seeds are going to be blessed. Well, for sure, that's the Jewish people. It has nothing to do with the Jewish people. It has to do with the seed of faith. It doesn't matter if you're black or white. It doesn't matter if you're Jewish or Gentile. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. What does matter is you believe in the Almighty, and you believe in His Son, and you believe the work that Jesus Christ has done on the cross, and you believe that there was a bloody cross in an empty tomb and you believe when you come to the Lord you are washed away and salvation has come to this house and you believe it and you know it you are washed you are clean you are Abraham's stock Galatians deals with that which I won't go into today but God explains things and then I like this because it explains God's agenda he said, the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which is lost. Here's a good test for your faith. When somebody gets saved, what do you do? Do you go, oh, 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 what happened again? No. Somebody got saved. No, if you have a joy in your heart, you're like, yes, that's the right thing. All those Pharisees, all those easily offended people, they should have been saying, yes, Jesus, that's a guy who needs it. He's a sinner. We all need it, but that guy really needs it, Lord. I'm just so proud of you. You're doing so good, Lord. We're just, we're just happy for you. But when God explains things and makes it clear, our response shows us the intent of our own heart. The Son of Man has come to save Seek and save. Show that which is lost. Would you stand with me this morning? Let's pray together. Praise the Lord. Show you the scary people. Shannon is the best looking one of us all. And he went and cut it all off. That's us. That's you. It's who we are. It's just who we are. But we're not alone. We have God with us. And we have the heart of the Savior. And God is with us. And God's come to stay with us. Would you say this with me? Lord Jesus Christ, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you love me. I believe you love sinners. Help me to be about Father's business. Help me to be joyous in my heart, Lord. Thankful, first of all. Rejoicing in all your work. Come into my heart. Holy Spirit, come into my life. Fill me and saturate me. Change me, O oh Lord. Let the sign that I hold be clear for Jesus Christ. From this day forward, for better or for worse, amen and amen.